Okay, I call the meeting to order and then start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's what I've I'd been like, told. Like yeah. To make a motion yeah, yeah, yeah. To give Glenn the uh, authority to run the meeting. I'll second. You, you've got a printout, right, Len? You normally come with one? Or do you? Yeah, you're good. No, me in favor. I think you have one. Okay. All those in favor? And Lenny abstains, just for the record. <laughs> All right, Glenn, it's your show. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, first order of business is approval of the agenda. Um, I would make a motion that we approve the agenda as it is. I'll second it. Thank you, Carol. Discussion? Anything we need to add? No. Okay. All those in favor? Public input and announcements. None. Okay. And then we'll take no action on no public comments. Um, approval of minutes from <coughs> 1016. I again will make a motion that we approve those minutes as presented. Um, I'll second it. Um, for discussion. For discussion. I yep. just need to be added to in person attendance. Yeah, it also says it was at Mill River, which is a true fair, right? Sure, very right. Oh, yep. That top section. And then um, it's just a little thing, but it confused me because it was me. Um, under the um, Community Engagement Committee, um, let's see, I think it said she discussed <laughs> upcoming events, but I guess it was me, so. You <laughs> yeah, I think that's important, though. I, <laughs> I want my name. Yeah. I want credit, because I just Well, she something. doesn't. So anyway, that was the only thing that I saw. Otherwise, it was great. Who did the minutes anyway? Because I know Rebecca couldn't be there. Were you there? I, I watched the recording. Oh, and you did it after? Excellent job. <laughs> <laughs> as, as a person who had to do the minutes for a long time in personnel, I can't tell you how nice it is not to have to do the minutes. Yeah, thank so you. So thank you tremendously, Yeah, Rebecca. always, always. Any other changes in the minutes? So uh, we have moving into Shrewsbury, including Kim as an in-person person, mm -hmm. and under uh, community engagement, oh. it will say Carol. Yeah, but you know what? I'm not on the in-person, am I? I'm not on the in-person. Am I in the right minutes? No. Yeah. Uh, no, you're not on there either. No, yeah, no. I'm not on it. I was live. Okay, so Carol should be added to that. Okay. <coughs> Anything else? So, uh, with those changes, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Thank you. That's done. Um, update on world language instructor. Uh, we've got hey, Katya Cook here. Yes, to, uh, that sure. is me. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Katya Cook, and I'm the head of the world language department here at Fort River. 
where we have three world languages, French, Spanish, and Russian. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about our programs. So next slide, please. So if you look um, at the Agency of Education's Portrait of a Graduate, what we hope uh, high school students can do by the end of their high school careers, and under global citizenship, and if you just hit it one more time, right? Yep. Um, there is number three, which is <laughs> that students study a non-native language and understand the importance of learning other cultures. So what we are doing in our program fully supports um, the ideals of a Vermont portrait of a graduate. Next slide, please. Sorry. Okay. Yep, all good. <laughs> um, our program is informed also by national standards and the American Council of Teachers of Foreign Languages, that's that ACTFL, has set forth uh, five goal areas for world readiness in language, and those are communications and cultures and connections, comparisons and communities, as well as a proficiency scale. So when we talk about students, um, being graded on a proficiency scale. World language was actually a, a one of the vanguards in that realm. And you'll notice it's an inverted pyramid. This is the development of a learner's language over time. So most students who know nothing start at the very bottom of that pyramid at the novice level. And they, you gradually make your way up noticing that as you go higher, it gets wider and wider. That ex expresses the advancing levels and amounts of vocabulary you need to reach the next level. What do levels mean? Um, well, by the end of four solid years of language at Mill River, we hope to get students to be at the intermediate mid. Um, some who are very motivated and talented can get to be intermediate high level, which means they can function on a daily basis in their lives for the most part, not going into great depth about things, but being able to function um, and then advancing towards being able to use the language for professional purposes, which would be the advanced level. Next slide. So what are we doing at Mill River? Um, at Mill River, the vast majority of students take at least one year of a world language to fulfill a graduation requirement. And we tell students who are considering attending college to plan to do two to four years of the same language in order to be ready for that. Um, in our evaluations, in our grading system, we focus on the goal areas of communication and culture because there are so many descriptives for all of the five. Um, so just to keep it a little less cumbersome, we focus on communication and culture. And in the last couple of years, we've started offering language to students in seventh grade, a full year of world language, same as the high school level. And so what we're finding as we've gone on in time is that by 10th grade, students are running out of language courses. They're doing first level in seventh grade, second level in eighth grade, third level in ninth grade, and fourth level in 10th grade. They're running out of language at the end of 10th grade. Next slide, please. Could I ask a quick question? Yes. Could they start another language? So absolutely, and we do encourage to. that, or they could even try to do multiple languages at the same time if that is interesting for them. Yes. Yeah. I have another question. Um, when they start in seventh grade, is it one specific language, or is it more of a general experience to be so, able to choose? Good question. Back in the day, we did sort of a language experience where they had Mm -hmm. uh, French and Spanish, mm -hmm. and it wasn't even a full year. Now we go whole hog into one full year of a world language. So that's good. Yeah, and for the most part, that they, they can do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we don't really modify for middle school level compared to high school freshmen. Um, so this slide kind of shows you what kids can do with language at the different levels. So level one, it's really just these memorized utterances. They're just memorizing phrases. So they might sound kind of fluent, but really it's, it's memorized. Um, by level two, they are starting to create with language, putting strings of sentences <coughs> together on their own. 
Level three, again, that's where we're like, okay, can you start to talk about everything you do in your daily life with a friend or with a peer? And then by level four, we're hoping they can be integrating um, other sources into their language, especially if they're going to give a presentation, and also being able to give opinions about things, justifying why they think something should be that way. So French program at Mill River, it's taught by me and by Madame Savory. And I'm currently teaching the level ones, threes, fours. Um, and Madame Savory is doing level two because she's also a ELA teacher. So again, these are just some examples of topics that we do at the different levels. We do more than that, obviously. Um, but those are just some examples. Uh, the methodology we're using is called comprehensible input which just means we're trying to speak in the target language at a level the kids understand, maybe plus a little bit more. Um, and performance-based assessments, that comes, um, it's, it's the latest thing, rather than just a pen and paper test, or there might be an oral interview aspect of it. With these, we're having them interpret language for listening and reading, um, as well as preparing some sort of presentation to give as part of their assessment. We have um, sometimes in the past had AP, French language and culture, and it is rare, but this year we have one student who is also in the room with us doing an independent study in AP, French language and culture. So that's the only way to do the AP is an independent study? Yes, I, yes. We don't have a class period that could match that right now. Um, Spanish program with Ms. Jennifer Martin and same kinds of things, comprehensible input. She says she likes to do a lot of project-based learning. Um, at level one, she starts them off with a uh, research project on why learn a world language, helping them to create for themselves a reason for wanting to know a world language. And since then, too, we've added it to French one and Russian one, just so that we have a common assessment for the students at, in all the languages. Next slide. So, Ruski Yazik, Russian language at Mill River. Uh, that's taught by me, and I'm so honored, and I feel so blessed to be able to offer Russian to our students here at Clarendon. Um, it's, it's just amazing. We are the only high school Russian program in Vermont. There's one, and I actually just this past weekend met the one high school Russian teacher in New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying to get um, Russian on the map for New England. Uh, it's a unique situation. So it's been different in different years, but this year um, we have one class period with three levels of Russian. So each of those Matryoshka dolls represents a level of Russian. <laughs> and kids are coming in in seventh grade, and some of them are staying through 12th grade. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, Dr. Robinson experienced it the other day. So <laughs> <laughs> Russian takes longer to learn, uh, not just because of the alphabet, but because of the grammar. However, we do try to keep up with similar topics and tasks that we're doing in the other languages so that the kids feel a, a commonality. Next slide. It's going slowly. <laughs> okay. So this year we also are offering middle school Spanish and French culture electives. Those are one semester electives. We are teaching them in English. We speak English when we do it. And we're learning about the products, practices, and perspectives of the cultures where French and Spanish are spoken. And just to give you an example of some of the things we're looking at, we're looking at geography, we're looking at art, education in those countries, um, music in those countries, foods, festivals, celebrations, and architecture. Some of those big C culture things. So we are trying in our own way to get our students outside and beyond Mill River. So Vermont, uh, 
Organization of Classic and Language Educators has some contests every year. Those are within Vermont. One is a poster contest, one is a poetry contest. Um, and last year, one of our Mill River students won a prize for her poster, and so she's very proud of that. Um, we've had kids learn the poetry, but not be brave enough to perform the poetry at this point. So we're gonna be working on that. There's also the NREC, which stands for National Russian Essay Contest. This is a contest that students write at school. And last year was the first year in many years that I felt that they were ready to try it. Um, given nothing more than a paper dictionary, the, the prompt and a pen, they write for an hour and a half on whatever the topic is. And we don't know the topic before they get it, so that's kind of scary. Um, but last year we had three kids earn bronze medals in that contest. And then we also prepared two students, two brave souls last year, who took on the New England Olympiad of Spoken Russian. Mm -hmm. And we took them to Harvard University uh, on a Sunday where they, you know, gave their memorized utterances because they were first year students. So they had memorized a poem, they had memorized some geography so they could point to places on a map of Russia. They had memorized some autobiographical stuff about themselves. And they had to go in front of Russians, <laughs> Russian speaking judges. Um, and perform and they did it they were terrified but they did it and they had um, a special Russian lunch afterwards the beauty of that thing was that they got to meet other kids in New England who are learning Russian in high school um, we won't talk about how they did compared to the Buckingham Brown and Nichols private school in Cambridge <laughs> <laughs> but you know they held their own and those two each earned a bronze medal for their efforts so that was nice um, so students as teachers and community outreach. Um, back during COVID times, and I believe it was before we formally offered seventh grade as a full year mm -hmm. of world language, uh, we had this thing where, you know, hmm, what, what can we do to jazz up life a little bit? It's COVID, it's kind of sad. So the French three students that year prepared little lessons to teach to the seventh graders and we did it right here in the cafeteria they were in tiny groups all masked up but each group of third year French students had a different topic and they taught that to the students I don't know you can see there it was an animals topic um, and then Ms. Martin carried on that tradition last year and with her Spanish three students they prepared a lesson and they went to the elementary school and they taught in the third grade classroom their lesson and the other great thing that Miss Martin's Spanish students have done, they, they raised some money with a little fundraiser here at Mill River and they donated all of it to the Rutland County Humane Society. So future plans. Um, <coughs> we're just continuing to encourage our students to participate in these locally and nationally adjudicated events. It's one of the few ways we have of getting feedback on how they are doing compared to peers and around the state and in other places. Um, the, the kids loved going into the elementary classroom, so we're going to try to continue that connection within our own district. And I would love to try and get more interdisciplinary units with other departments. I did some forays into it last year, but sometimes scheduling makes it really hard to do. Um, I have reached out to Stafford's culinary program because it occurred to me that this year uh, at least the, the Russian class on a block day works really well for a time period uh, to do a lunch at Stafford uh, because it's the period before lunch, lunch, and then there's flex block after that. Um, they said contact us again in the springtime, <laughs> but my vision for that would be that Stafford students prepared Russian foods and my students would prepare some conversation topics ahead of time and the older students in that class would be heads of table to facilitate a little conversation at the table in Russian during a lunch at Stafford. Um, and finally, this is another pie in the sky. Oh, sorry, one more. Sorry. Um, pie in the sky would be to maybe collaborate with the art program to travel to museums in Massachusetts that aren't too far away. The Clark has a beautiful 
collection of French Impressionists and other European art. And I've recently learned that there's a Russian icon museum in Worcester, Massachusetts. So that could be an interesting collaboration. So there you go. Thank you. Gracias. Merci. Spasiba. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Questions? Well, you know, we were trying to get apparently a world language program for the elementary school and that hasn't been successful but it's nice to hear that the older students are at least going down and giving some exposure and experience to the younger kids at least it makes a big difference because then when they get excited when they get to Mill River and yeah want to you know take the language so that's great that you're doing that yeah and one thing I'm wondering um, yes. if you have resources mm -hmm. about best practices for elementary um, world language exposure for children like frequency um, that yes. sort of thing like how small often doses you? frequently mm -hmm. and honestly lots of songs and music mm -hmm. I, I taught French for a while at Barstow um, we started in fourth grade there but any kinds of games songs are a really good way to integrate it at the mm -hmm. elementary level thank you Sean was going to share a little bit. Uh, as you heard from Kristen when we were at Shrewsbury, you heard about what folks are doing there, but you also heard a little bit about uh, the school goals from Kristen's perspective. So Sean's going to give you a couple of updates for Mill River's goals when we hear from departments. Okay. Um, <coughs> I also just want to, sorry, shut up. Um, how incredibly challenging it is to teach three different levels of language in <laughs> one room. And I don't want to put Katya on the spot. Um, but the amount of commitment, as someone who's recently been in that class, the amount of commitment to be able to diversify language learners at three separate levels inside one period who are also developmentally in really different places chronologically is really a gift that Katya has. Um, and it's, it's really impeccable and, and incredibly impressive. Um, so we do great stuff at Mill River because we've got great people. And I just wanted to make sure that like, in case people didn't realize how uh, impressive that is. So yeah, just throwing it out there. Um, I'm just going to give you kind of a, a, a top end update of Mill River at the moment with some stuff there. Um, let me know if you guys have questions. Um, <clears throat> and again, as you know, I like to show people out at the end. Um, it's one of the things that I just bring to the table. Um, so a couple of great things. One, newsletters. We do newsletters every week, mostly. There's been a couple of times where I've missed it. It's been a thing. Um, we're getting between 350 and 450 hits every week um, out of about 510 possible. So the bulk of the people that we send it out to get it. Um, we are finding that a few of our people in a power school don't have updated email addresses. This is an ongoing problem we're trying to rectify. <laughs> The one thing I've been telling people recently is that if you're not getting it to your email, it means we probably don't have it. So if you run into people in the community who have kids at Mill River in particular that aren't getting newsletters every week, um, it's likely a, a contact issue and they can call us and we'll fix it. Um, shout outs down at the bottom for our wonderful high school football team. And um, I could spend like an hour talking about all the work we did for Halloween, but these are our faculty who were there for the very, very large costume party. Um, you may not know, but school fair season has begun. Uh, we have school counselors who go out to school fairs to talk about how awesome Mill River is. Um, a lot of these are like kind of awkward in that some of them are, we're one school of like 10 that show up to talk about stuff. Some it's only us, some of it's, it's, a, it's an interesting place. Um, and in some circumstances, it's just like kids who are there to like go look at stuff. Sometimes it's parents um, and our team is just willing to kind of go and talk about how cool Mill River is. Um, I share a two-page handout I'm not going to uh, go through. I thought it looked really cool and talks a little bit of some of our programs. Uh, when we link this in the final um, presentation, we can uh, take a look at it if you want to, or share it out, be my guest. Um, the other thing I want to show, uh, let folks know too, is we're working on some promotional videos. Uh, Kara McCullough is working on doing some stuff so we can share one with prospective parents um, and prospective hires as well. Um, we're hoping to do some interviews of, you know, why'd you choose Mill River? Or what does Mill River mean to you? Um, organization's been a little bit slow. School year's been busy. Um, but check the newsletter. We're going to be reaching out in the next couple of weeks, hopefully before the holidays, uh, to find some people who'd be willing to get on camera for a minute or two just to kind of blurb it. Um, so that's a work in progress. So just know it's coming. Um, just a quick question. Please. School fair? Yep. What, what does that mean? So <laughs> a number of the schools that have school choice in the community, in oh, the larger okay. community, yep. have nights or days, depending on what we're talking gotcha. about, where schools who could be open to school choice 
um, go and present their programs. Yep. Um, most of these tend to be sort of like interest fair style from my understanding people get tables yep. and then sometimes it's parents who show up, sometimes it's for kids, um, sometimes we just show up not necessarily 100% knowing who we're going to talk to. Um, and again, sometimes it's 10, 10 people, uh, 10 different schools and 30 kids and sometimes it's, really, it's a very interesting uh, facet of the work that I don't know if people realize and as we sort of work towards specific schools? Yeah, so different schools host different fairs. Some of them oh, are a little okay. more regional. Um, I can give you more information about it. I don't have it at my fingertips no, right no, this no, second. That, that's fine. Um, so yeah, we've been to three so far. It's something I like. I didn't realize uh, until coming on board that we did, randomly, uh, which has been cool, but people have been interested. Um, we are in the process of developing a building goal for the year. Um, when I came on board and we were talking about building goals, I was curious to know if people knew what the last years were. And collectively, a lot of people didn't have a clue. Um, and for me, coming on board, it was really important that we share that work together. Um, in order to do that, it has taken like four times as long as anyone planned. Um, but it was really important to me as someone coming in here to begin one with our leadership team. So all of our chairs, a few extra folks uh, meet in a perfect world every other week. Um, there's been some challenges with schedules. Um, but I really wanted to say, what is our community goal? Um, from there, we then brought it to full faculty today to get some feedback on. Uh, again, with everything going on, it's been a little tough to get everyone in a room together. I think there's still some wordsmithing to do, but we, I think we've settled close to a general idea, which is we want that Mill River is a place where all people are engaged, motivated, and want to be. Um, it's a big goal. It's a very sort of visionary goal. We got to work from here to make that actionable. Um, this is the work that we're doing right now. Um, it's important to me as the principal, and I think for us as a leadership group, to share that work and the vision that we have. We have folks, and I'll bring this up in my next slide, um, but building a common language is important, and I think it's work that is uh, meaningful that we're currently doing. So um, on top of that, each department has goals that they've designed for the year, and those are getting worked through uh, into actionable items. Um, these are organic and growing as we start talking about what are manageable goals, what are real goals for us, what are long-term things, but I think um, it's tough to sort of have meta conversations when we're in the middle of November, um, but it's still something that I'm pushing forward to have time in, and I think um, faculty have appreciated having some time and some room to do that work, um, because often it gets kind of left by the wayside when we have more pragmatic things to deal with. Um, one of the other things we're working on is developing a common language among the faculty. Um, this is something that I've been pushing really hard for. Um, I can share this. It's just an, an image of what is a Mill River teacher. So we have people in the building who've been in the building since it was built, it feels like, so 35, 40 years. We've got people who are brand new coming in. And one of the things that happens with all of this turnover and different perspectives is what does it really mean to be a Mill River teacher? Sounds simple. It's really complicated because people have really different visions of what that means. And so the work we began over the summer, uh, as summer ended, uh, one of our onboarding days was asking a lot of questions about different facets of the community here at Mill River and the processes by which we go on. So we had, um, I think, 12 or 16 different stations that people responded to about stuff that we do here in the building. And so we took that, building leadership took that information and tried to distill that into themes to try to really talk about what what's the work that we do here? How do we communicate that to each other? How do we share those ideas so that we're all on the same page? Um, whether you've been here for a minute or you've been here for 30 years. So we're working through some of that. This is still works in progress, um, but it feels like important work because we have visions of Mill River and all of us contribute to that work. And so being able to say, here is our kind of North Star here, um, it then lets us start having interesting conversations related to how are we approaching these things? How are we talking to each other? How are decisions made? Um, not necessarily in an evaluatory way, um, but is a place of what is our ethos? How do we kind of do our business? So we're working through some of that stuff. Next up is uh, what does a Miller River course look like? Um, and I look forward to that work because uh, it is interesting how very different people's perspectives of what a Mill River teacher was. Um, and not exclusive. They weren't necessarily mutually exclusive, but like it is not a simple con question to answer because so many people have put their hearts and souls into it and the work that we do. So uh, to know that's work we're doing here. 
struggles. Um, two things that we have run into that I think transparency is really important for. Uh, one, we've had a pretty sharp increase in contraband this year. Um, we've had a really sharp increase related to vape pens, which are um, electronic cigarettes, essentially, uh, that can be filled with all sorts of things. Um, there's been a pretty sharp uptick of them. Um, in order to respond to them, um, in some areas, we're trying to engage with community partners to provide some programming. Um, that's been a little slow. People's resources are pretty strapped, um, so it's been a little slower than we'd hoped. Um, we're shifting gears a bit to offer some of that programming internally and trying to figure out how do we uh, free up some energy and some time to make that happen. Um, so that's, I think, important, as well as some funding that we have to bring in some speakers to talk about it. Um, number two, staffing. Um, <clears throat> we have three people who are on the injured list at the moment, which is a lot. It is a lot to cover what is essentially like 12 classes every single day. Um, Tracy Spencer is our sub-coordinator. I want to shout her out. Uh, we've had as many as 16 staff out in a single day. Uh, 16 times six classes, it's a lot. Um, and we get through, we have a small group of subs who are willing to come in, which is wonderful and amazing, we appreciate them. Um, but frankly, the lion's share is covered by our existing faculty who are willing to give up their prep time to cover classes or who are willing to think outside of the box. Sometimes it means we shove a couple of classes into the cafeteria where they're getting study halls. It's a reality that we have to deal with. Um, there's, it feels like there's been a new wave of sickness every single week, um, and it's a thing that happens. On top of the usual, which is additional training that people go to, or like, just life happens. You know, we've got a ton of people with kids, and if I'm not sick, the family's sick. Um, it happens a lot. Um, but I want to just be open and transparent about that being an ongoing thing that we continue to contend with. Yeah? Is injured list just like another, is it just extended sick leave? Yeah. And so just people who are out, and that just creates additional strain on the system. Um, you'll notice we have some um, long-term subs posted uh, to help support that, but there are no, there are no bites for that. Um, so we're trying to be creative. Um, we have folks who have volunteered to do overages, so people are committing, not just for the odds and ends when I have a prep period a moment free, but are willing to give up one of their preps to cover a class full time. Um, so we're working through some of that, and we're pretty optimistic about this being a short-term relatively speaking problem, but I just want to be upfront about it because it's something that we deal with every day. It's rare that we have three people in that kind of situation. It's usually one. Yeah. So. <clears throat> so it's a thing that we deal with. Um, I also wanted to briefly talk about attendance and ESTs. They're just systems people may not realize are deeply, deeply labor intensive. So we have two people who work full time who uh, cover our attendance system. It is um, a very uh, detailed system. There's a link to a presentation Cindy Jarvis put together for you to look at um, at your leisure. I'm not, it's about 15 slides, so I'm not going to do all of that tonight. Um, if you'd like to hear more about either our attendance system or ESE, she's available to come in um, <clears throat> and is happy to talk about that. Um, ESTs are educational support teams. We work to develop plans for students who are having academic struggles. Um, again, very complex system where a lot of people are coming together, um, but I wanted to share both of those as things. Um, numbers are a little hard year to year at the moment, but I think it's worth kind of sharing out a few of these. So part of what we have to do with attendance based on numbers of days out are letters and affidavits, and there's a whole legal process attached to truancy. So numerically, just so we're kind of looking at them, um, this has both uh, the 2023, 20, 2024 year, as well as 24, 25. Um, the numbers are pretty low. I think they're pretty on par with what last year's looked like. Um, you know big picture, when we look at that 20 day letter, that would be kids who have missed 20 days of school so far, which again for first quarter is, would be a lot of time overall. Only having two is uh, not bad, frankly. Uh, the team itself has been working really diligently to connect with families who are leaving the district and maybe didn't finish paperwork. Um, we also started doing home visits again, uh, which is uh, deeply challenging. Uh, it's where our assistant principal, Ms. Standard, and our SRO go out to commun home, the community and knock on doors to make sure kids are okay. Um, and I brought that up, I think, one of my last presentations about them kind of doing that work. Um, it is not a lot of fun, um, but they're doing it for the kids. And I think we're seeing outcomes improve because of that. Um, folks know that we're out and we care, so I think those have been positive things. <coughs> Um, so I share both of those. Hopefully we'll have more numbers to look at in the future. That ESC number, that 31 versus 60, um, largely these are rollovers from last year and people who are kind of in need now who are probably in need last year. They're not brand new students. Um, we started uh, with a really heavy push in the beginning of the year knowing that we didn't want kids to have a gap in support as the year started. 
questions that I can answer for folks. That was a lot, I know. But I wanted to share stuff that maybe wasn't in the newsletter or things you may not have seen before um, to try to keep it lively on a Wednesday night. This isn't a question, but it's a comment. I noticed today um, the sign is up, and it's beautiful. I got it in my, in my oh. shout outs. It's all oh, cool. Okay. I just oh, like to okay. give questions oh, before like, I just like run oh, through it's them. Beautiful, and I think though. it happened today. It happened so, today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I've got a really good story attached to it. Um, I'll run through shout outs and just because. Okay. Uh, number one, we have a great team of people who support our after school programs. Um, they are largely working with our student athletes uh, and often our middle school student athletes. If you have not had the pleasure of seeing a middle schooler after a long day of school, uh, between a long day of school and before practice, um, it is without any fail the wildest time in this building. Um, and these folks show up and deal with it and support them, which is great. Um, so shout out to them. They were horrified that I was taking their picture today. Uh, today was also one of the first times we had uh, rock climbing and uh, unified bowling, and there's a group of people who are going to music. It was like a lot of kids really unexpectedly. Um, we lulled thinking it was gonna be like five or six or seven, and it was like 50. Um, and they were just like, okay, cool. And it was cool, it was great. I just, um, they're doing good stuff. And can um, you introduce them to us? Um, if they um, don't want yes. their names, no. Um, my brain is blanking really yeah. bad. Oh, yeah. 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 So it's yeah. David's over there, and yeah. then Tony. Uh, Tony is um, over there. And, and that's Kayla Jones. That's Kayla Jones. Kayla. Sorry. Kayla um, comes over from Clarendon, actually, yeah. to do after school care cool. after she's that's done. Right. There. Um, well, thanks. It has been that. a really long day. And I really am apologetic about not pulling Hurry names. Up. We can send you No, up. it's good. <laughs> um, no, this is important. Too. This is really important. Um, you may or may not know that we have 13 music ensembles. You may have heard that before. Um, like, that's a thing. Um, I don't know if people realize how impressive that work is. Uh, if you came to the concert a couple of weeks ago, it was standing room only in the auditorium. Uh, and when standing room, I mean like 40 people in the back who are trying to cram in together. Um, it's exceptional work, and the amount of time that the kids are putting in, they're coming in in the mornings. Bronson, I'm sure, can share some of that stuff. They're coming in the morning before school starts. They're trying to eke out some time between when school starts and their practices start. And then we have faculty who are willing to come into the crack of dawn to do this work and say really late to do this work. Um, right at the moment, they are currently doing tryouts. Um, there's a bus full of kids. I tried to get a picture of the kids on the bus, but they were all being like too silly, which is fine. And then when I said, I'm gonna put this to the board, they're all really horrified because they're all middle schoolers. So just imagine that for a moment. But I also appreciate this is a picture from homecoming. Um, we have people who are, we have roughly 180 people who are in our music programs. And depending on whether you ask, um, our, our arts director or our athletic director. We may have 179 athletes, maybe, or it might be 180 athletes, depends on which day and who you're asking. There's similar numbers and there's a ton of overlap. It's a lot of kids um, who are engaging in our programs. And I think uh, it's important to just acknowledge how unique that is. And then lastly, your sign is back, uh, which is amazing. Um, Dave and Barbie really didn't want public acknowledgement for their work. They believe really deeply, um, and I have via email that they are members of the Mill River community and are happy to help however they can. Uh, their kids came through Mill River. They've been um, integral parts of our community, but unfortunately, I can't not say thank you. Um, this is super cool. They took the sign down, scraped it all down to a bare wood, filled in any, like, stuff that had happened to it. Luckily, there wasn't like a whole lot of like graffiti and stuff, but there was a little bit. And then hand painted both sides. And from my understanding, the gold is gilding. So like they got in there and it is like epic. Um, I tried to find them before they put it back up again, but they came in, put it up and ran, um, <laughs> which we appreciate the whole time. Um, so a uh, humongous shout out to them for the work that they did. So um, it's cool to have the sign back up again. Mm -hmm. That's what I got. What else can I answer for folks? Or do people have any other questions? Thank you, and the you. newsletters mm -hmm. are great. Yeah, awesome. they are. Um, and if you ever have questions or things you want to see or, or programmatic stuff, um, I could talk, as I've said a billion times, I could talk about Mill River for days. Um, and so I try to give you guys highlights, but there's stuff specifically. Um, there is so much good work that goes on every single day in the building. Um, and people bust in their butts and doing cool stuff. Um, and sometimes, unfortunately, the hard part for me is figuring out how do I give you enough without kind of drowning you in pictures and cool stuff. So um, that's what we got. All right. Thank you so much, as always. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Um, it's always great to hear what's going on with our kids. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And I, I know it's been hard for you being sort of the new guy on the block. Um, 
but I, I appreciate your hard work as well and your diligence in in keeping Mill River going. I appreciate it. Also, it's uh, many hands that make light work. There is a lot of people here yep. who are deeply committed to the work that we do, and I am uh, astounded every day by the hard work and belief that people put in. Yep. So it makes my job pretty easy, to be honest. Well, and I would urge any board member that wants to come in here and walk around and check I'm the busy. place out. Some of us come in here more often than we probably should, but um. <laughs> you want a really good experience. Lunchtime is is a really unique period of time for the day. Yes, which it really is. Really give you a, a full 360 view of some of what our day looks like. Always interesting. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Again, I appreciate it. I really do. Okay, then that's the Mill River update. Thank you. Thank you. And world language update. Thank you. Which brings us to foundations building Almost. temporary oh, walls. Skip one. Speech oh. language pathologist. Oh, excuse me. I skipped one. Speech language pathologist contracted services bids. It's me, Lynn. I'm running out of language this time of night, though. But um, <laughs> <laughs> ironically, um, so it should have been included, I believe, in your packets. Mm -hmm. Um, I had told you all at the last board meeting we had at Shrewsbury that I'd be back tonight to talk with you about the quotes for services for um, the providers that we procured. Um, as I had sort of uh, hinted at at the last meeting, um, my recommendation for, for you all is that we um, do select VocoVision as the provider. Um, their rate certainly was um, among the lowest of the of the quotes that we obtained, um, and certainly I would, you know, just want to emphasize that Vocovision, you know, on some level is part of our continuity of service just because of our existing partnership with them. Um, believe it or not, we actually um, do get a bit of a discount with them for for being a return client. So um, then that's not necessarily reflected here. Um, but that is my recommendation. I am happy to answer questions if you have any. Are, are we still posting that position? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And I think you said this last time, Coral, right, that VocoVision understands that we may oh, yeah. we exit would. the contract. Yeah, if yeah. yeah we would drop them and immediately. That's a provision if we, that's yeah. reasonable yeah. in the contract. Yeah. yeah. And remind me again what schools it would be with. Um, so, this position, uh, this position will serve Wallingford, Shrewsbury, and Tinmouth, and actually as of today, it looks like there will need to be a couple students from Clarendon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, we so need a motion? I, yeah, we need a motion. Then to approve? Yeah. Contracting Contract. with Vocal Vision. Yeah. With Vocal Vision. Yeah. Contract with vocal vision. Vocal vision. Yeah. I make that motion. As speech language pathologist. For speech language pathology services. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I second it. <coughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor? Could have had a long discussion. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say oh, yeah. we could probably. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. For sure. And thanks for your work on that, Coral. Yeah. Thanks, Coral. Yeah, yeah, yes, you're welcome. Absolutely. Okay. Too far. Um, <laughs> so, do I try this again? Foundations building temporary walls. Me too, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to play my best Tim Hart this evening. <laughs> and you guys can all tell him how horrible yeah, Tim, it was. Tim did the work on the quotes yeah. and the yeah. proposals, yeah. and he'll be the one. Uh, seeing the project through but Coral can describe the need yeah. for this and where it's coming from because it seems like an interesting thing it's actually less of a project than it sounds however um, but there is the expense um, so foundations um, you know underwent pretty substantial renovation as many of you will remember however um, well, part of the appeal of that building is that we could make the space customizable for student need. 
um, which is exactly what I'm here to speak about tonight. We have two students currently that because of the need involved, they really need to have access to a self-contained space. Um, I don't know if, if all of you have been in the foundations building, but there are basically three, what I would call like breakout spaces. All of those spaces are being utilized for different therapies, different instructional approaches, you know, that kind of thing. So we now have these two children that do need access to their own self-contained space. So Tim and I did a, a reassessment of the building to look at what are our options for <laughs> meeting these needs and making this happen in a way that, that is, you know, most feasible for everybody involved. I can't have programming be disturbed in that building for any length of time. We've got, you know, about eight kids over there right now. Um, and, and I can't have a situation where we have, um, you know, safety needs being presented. Um, so Tim and I took a, a look at the building, uh, what we landed on as being the best option. When I say best, I mean most practical, most feasible, and quickest. Um, we are able to essentially slap up some temporary walls that have a very permanent looking um, cosmetic appeal to them. Uh, you know, they're not cinder blocks necessarily, um, but they're also not like drywall either. They actually come in panels, um, but they are much sturdier than like Pat, if you remember the partitions at Wallingford, they're much sturdier than those. So there's, there's a bit of a soundproofing element that comes with it. Um, the, I've never seen this before, but the cool thing about the walls is we can actually install doors within them so we can still maintain like egress um, and things like that. So these, the kids that are in the spaces will still have access to sunlight and you know we can still maintain our fire standards and stuff like that. Um, and I think it also will really, um, it's just going to add to the practicality of that building in terms of making more space available to, to the kids that are over there. So um, I believe the quote that Tim settled on is somewhere in the neighborhood of $8,500. Uh, and I believe it's from a company called Swiftwall is who we had, had been dealing with. Um, so that um, expense comes to you tonight for, for a motion. And, and reason that comes to you is because this is an unbudgeted mm -hmm. expense. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've been talking during budget season at our finance meetings a fair bit about uh, money we have earmarked for special education tuition. Mm -hmm. So if we have students whose needs are such that they access a program off-site, that's what that money is earmarked for. Yep. Uh, there is funding there that we are not using and this seems like an appropriate transfer because we are trying to uh, serve a student's needs who are a little higher than anticipated. So mm -hmm. what could turn into a tuition situation, we're trying to cover in-house. So it seemed like the most logical place to transfer funds. Uh, if we're transferring more than $2,500, we're always coming yep. to you. Yep. So that's the reason it's in front of you tonight, if that makes sense. So I'll make a motion that we approve the purchase of uh, temporary walls. From Swift Wall. Swift Wall. Swift Wall, yeah. All um, seconded. Okay, now I have a question. So they're temporary, so does that mean they can be moved around? Essentially, so, yes, yeah. So yeah. that if you need yeah. different spaces. And the yep. second, are these um, isolation rooms or are they instructional rooms? Instructional. I would not. Good I question. would not call them isolation at all. I I'm think pretty so, but opposed philosophically I to that. I figured I'd get that out. Good there. to yeah, know. Uh, we're, yeah, we're pretty opposed to anything that would be seclusionary or isolationary in nature. Uh, but it is a it is a space that just offers extra room for instruction for sure. some other kids. Yeah. 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 And then yeah. they can also move freely. I mean, throughout. I have I have been in there, and it is. Yeah. Two big rooms. So, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Looks like Thank you, everybody. that's Thank you, everybody. unanimous. There you go. 
Thank you again, Coral. Yes, thank you. Um, that brings us to committee reports. First up, personnel. Uh, oh, uh, that'd be me. <laughs> um, we met tonight, and we have a couple of things. Um, we have a, con and I'll make a motion that we offer a contract to Mackenzie Belando. Um, 1.0 full-time equivalency educational support staff. I can second. Kim second that. Discussion. Where is this, Brian? Uh, Wallingford. This is. I'm sorry. <laughs> do you know where? Where is? Where's Mackenzie going to be housed out of? Because it will be the supporting the speech I, language. I I'm going to venture to oh. just say like Mackenzie's her home base is probably going to be at the central office. Um, yeah. So much of her work will be liaisoning. Is that a word, Carol? I don't know. Liaisoning with Cheyenne Kazakis yeah, yeah, and I. Yeah, okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I guess if we wanted to call her home base Wallingford, we. No, that, that's, that's not what she'll be Because she'll be supporting the contracted speech yeah. language pathologist yeah. services. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. she'll be Wherever a little that may over. Yeah. take her. Yeah. Good question. Any other questions? All those in favor? Okay. Opposed? Uh, next is we have... Uh, resignation from Ryan Harvey who is the tech one of the tech people tech innovation and support specialists here at Mill River um, and he has made the decisions just to step down from his role um, so uh, and and I can speak to the fact that Ryan helped me tremendously when I was without uh, internet um, so I would make a motion that we accept the resignation of Ryan Harvey okay, I'll second it. thank you questions discussions I, I think it's important to, to understand that we have um, <coughs> excuse me and BJ has and the tech department have done lots of things to try to maintain yeah. and and keep Ryan to support here. Ryan yeah um, but that's the decision that he makes so all those in favor opposed okay uh, next is um, in the personnel committee, um, and I know the board received in their packet, uh, central office longevity pay adjustment for the fiscal year 26 budget. Um, these are non-union people. Mm -hmm. um, they don't fall under the teacher's contract. They don't fall under support staff contract. And their central office folks and, and we would we would say that they are support staff equivalent yeah. so if they fell under a master agreement they would be support staff uh, there are some arrangements where our actually our master agreement outlines who can be part of collective bargaining and there are some positions that that can't be because of the nature of their role right uh, so these are those folks that would otherwise be on the support staff contract but are not allowed to be and I, I think it's fair to say we had a great deal of discussion in, in mm -hmm. personnel, mm -hmm. um, and I don't mean that in a bad way, um, looking at trying to get a handle moving forward mm -hmm. on staff and salaries and where people fall and, and where they line up and those kinds of things. Um, Stan was the one who presented to our committee and as you can see it, it's based on each amount is based on the number of years of experience and the intent is and correct me if i'm wrong brian yep. to to sort of get these folks on an equal footing with others 
who have received increases via um, contracts or not contracts um, just being hired yeah. later just later that? hires yeah. yeah yeah I think that's a fair way to put it so so I, I think we need another motion yeah we, we would ask for a motion to adopt this for next year so fiscal year 26 so I'll make that motion since we had it in personnel I'll second it I'll, please. Oh, go ahead, Greg. <laughs> oh, no, that's fine. I was just, I was in personnel, so I was going to second it. Okay. Discussion. And uh, again, I'll say, as chair of the personnel committee, mm -hmm. I, I think, and, and Steve, this sort of impacts you as well, looking at finance, that down the road it would be nice if we could somehow simplify salary schedules and contracts and those kinds of things and I know we just you know agreed to a three-year thing with the with the teachers and we're mm -hmm. getting ready to negotiate with the support staff, staff. Yep. Um, so I just think and other folks have expressed their opinions that it would might be a good time to take a look at how this all works mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a big question we had, Stephen, earlier was uh, about the financial impacts of doing that work. And that's right. where my recommendation was that we have a conversation through finance with a ballpark from Stan about how much it would cost. If it's doable from a finance perspective, then we can definitely sit down and do the work and try and prep something for, you know, for teacher negotiations that would be... You know, we're in year one of a three-year contract, right. so we've got some time to do it and some time to think about it. But I think that would be, you know, definitely a conversation that if the board wants us to move that direction, absolutely, we would love to move that direction too. And I, th I think it's important that to understand that what has been agreed to was agreed to by the teachers union as well. Sure. So it's not something that the board has imposed. Yeah on anybody it's it's been a mutual yeah. kind of deal and we can have a different mutual deal down the road <laughs> if all are agreeable to it yeah okay any other discussion one yes. thing I just I forgot to ask during personnel is there we don't have like an adjusted um, cost of living pay increase year over year do we no what I think that would typically be something that when we're negotiating with the union they would bring us those types of numbers as part of their ask for uh, what they'd like to see and for, for non-union for non-union folks what we would typically do is we would say support staff negotiated this you are you are would otherwise be support staff so we would come to the board to ask for that same increase for you so that's what we've done the last several years so if support staff negotiated uh, last year was 5%, so that in theory uh, covered cost of living and whatever other, uh, whatever other rationale the support staff had for asking for that amount, and we came to the board last spring to ask for that for non-union folks. That's helpful, that, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Any other discussion, questions? Okay, all those in favor? Awesome, thank you. I think those, those folks will appreciate uh, the value you put on their years and dedication in the yep. district. So thank you. Okay, so that takes care of personnel. Policy, uh, H2 second read, which is uh, a fan. Spectators at school events. There you go. <laughs> um, we don't have a no um, Jody can you, do you want to speak to the policy sure uh, so this policy is a a pretty brief policy that's just intended to say that um, that the board supports the general spectator guidelines that have been added to the Mill River Handbook and to the Athletic Handbook. 
that says that we um, strongly encourage um, and have specific guidelines around spectating at all performance events here at Mill River um, that require us to be supportive and positive of all participants, um, whether they're visitors or, or home players or performers. And I think it just helps support the administration as they go about their <laughs> business at extracurricular activities. Absolutely. And it helps our coaches and our refs yeah. and yeah. our players feel supported by the board as well. Right. Yeah. Is this a new policy? Has it is a new policy. It's never been a policy. It has huh? never been a policy. Huh. Um, it came up at the end of last year when we were seeing an uptick in some struggles. Um, and so Kim and I went and looked at other boards' policies um, for some models, and this is one we liked out of New York State, yep. another small rural district. So we amended theirs um, and brought it to the policy committee. There is admin procedure. Oh, okay, but no policy that that procedure. Now you have a procedure that's is covered by a policy. The policy now backs it up. Yeah. Yeah. So we actually yeah. didn't. We didn't have specific set guidelines. It, it, we had a general specific thing that said, please, you know, be yes. respectful. Um, but we didn't have really specific breakdowns of what that looked like. Raj, go ahead. So it sounded like you said it only applies at, at Mill River. So does it only apply to home games or is it wherever the teams go? Uh, so, in general, our procedures and um, so our board policies apply at Mill River, but our procedures would apply to Mill River folks wherever they are at school events. So, so I guess let me parse that out. We cannot. It would apply to any spectator if they were on Mill River grounds, but any player or representative of our faculty or students anywhere for co code of conduct. So, so uh, we couldn't necessarily exclude somebody from an away game if something came up. Uh, we would not just sit by and watch it happen. We would have no. conversations with the admin at the away game, uh, but we have a lot more we can do if it's a home game. Well, and I think, oh, I'm sorry. Can no, I just thought it was a good question. And I also think if you follow extracurricular activities over the past couple of years um, it, it has not always been and I'm not talking about my river I'm talking about in general in the state of Vermont it has not always been very pleasant mm -hmm. there have been issues and mm -hmm. so I think this will help the folks here and in theory, the more athletic directors in the region work together and talk about what's working and what's not working, you would hope to see other districts in the region having a similar policy mm -hmm. so that things would play out similarly, right. but right now they might not. So mm -hmm. something that might happen at one of our home games and be dealt with, we might see it in an away game and it not be dealt with. Yeah. Um, that's just the reality I think that's where we are right you now. You were talking about. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. No, good. Good distinction. Yeah. I know it's not public speaking, but could I make one comment? Simply that um, if you ever would like to see like exceptional behavior, spectator mm. and athlete um, mm. behavior modeled, please attend any um, unified sports oh, events right on. that yeah. you are aware of, that you are made aware of, yeah. because they are always. Right wonderfully on. inspirational and, uh, and yeah. yes supportive of everyone yeah no that's great Thank you. great to point out John mm -hmm. yeah we don't we don't just have spectators who are problems we have lots of spectators who are awesome too yeah and unified sports is a great place to go to see that okay so we have a motion in a second right no no oh. yeah <laughs> I don't think so <laughs> Well, I was going to ask so we were having all this discussion and we that. haven't even uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay yeah, I so think we just we turned to Jody for the introduction and we never got into a okay. real discussion which okay. we maybe should have but so okay. does someone want to make a motion to accept policy H2 I'll make a motion to accept policy H2 thank you gray is there a second 
I'll second it. Thank you. Discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Further discussion. <laughs> okay, seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed. Okay, next. Uh, Bill? What, I'll pause you. Don't we have a, a meeting next week for policy? Yes, we do. Um, is that 12, 530? So the next meeting of the policy committee will be November 12th at 530 hybrid um, in this meet room. Awesome. And I'll back up in the next uh, personnel. personnel committee meeting is December 4th at 630 here. Thank you for that. Buildings and ground. Oh, that's um. Have we had one, Stephen? Yeah, we had we had that like um, back to back finance. Oh, right before finance. That's right. Building and grounds that's and right. finance. Um, and we decided. Well, can I talk mm -hmm. for that meeting? Let me see. I might have even taken notes. But um, first of all, we decided we definitely need an hour. Yep. Um, we tried a half hour. That didn't work. Um, I guess we don't have any. There's nothing to be approved, right? We talked Correct. about the situation in um, Wallingford Kitchen, and we had some um, public comment on that and the refrigeration. Um, and um, we talked about heat pumps up at Shrewsbury. Oh, there's the whole minutes. I was just looking at my little scratch here. And um, we talked We talked about at our next meeting, I think, trying to get priorities around, like, the floors in carpets, all the schools. Yeah, yeah and replacing carpets. Yeah, replacing carpets and whether we should do that as a district-wide yep. um, project and maybe that might invite more. Yeah. Um, that was I my I think that's a great thing. idea invite more bids because it's a bigger project so we're gonna I think follow up on that and Stephen you know probably knows better but um, I'm not Stephen I'm sorry I keep calling Tim. him Stephen I mean Nick, oh, Nick. the chair and um, his brother Stephen sorry they're all I know them all um, and so we're gonna try and maybe look at that five-year plan and come up with some projects that can be grouped together mm -hmm. that we might be able to kind of contract out together to bring in um, more more bids because they're just not getting bids. And and to add one thing to what Carol just shared, the the heat pumps at Shrewsbury, the refrigeration at Wallingford, and the outbuilding at Wallingford, the B and G committee told Tim go seek quotes on those, mm -hmm. bring them to us. So the next B and G meeting, uh, we may have some things that do start coming to the full board for approval, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And okay. I don't know if we scheduled another meeting. I don't see it on my calendar, so. Uh, so. The, at the time, we did not, but Nick sent out an email. Nick asked, would the 25th or the 26th work? And Tim said they would. Uh, Rebecca, do you remember, did we send on the Monday or the Tuesday? I do not. I can look for that. Okay, so meeting to be announced. Yeah, that that Monday or Tuesday before Thanksgiving, but we'll get it. We'll get it out. Okay. Anything else? Building and grounds. Moving right along. Community engagement. Hello. <laughs> um, so our next meeting is going to be November twentieth. I think at six thirty. Is that sound right? A couple of members here, um, and we really want to look at the feedback loop and how we're responding to. Um, comments and questions we get at community engage or community conversations and we'll probably try and schedule a couple of community conversations but more towards maybe after the budget is finalized we can do a couple um, <clears throat> and Pat completed the activity calendar for November and December I've got it queued up I'm going to mail it out um, mail it out to you guys and the principals and invite the principals and you guys, anybody, to update it if there's um, events that might be interesting to the board um, that aren't on there. Things like world language activities or uh, things like that. So um, that aren't just on the main event calendar. 
And things coming up really soon. Saturday, there's the co competitive robotics in the library um, in the afternoon from 1 to 4, and also the Interact Club dinner um, at oh, the yeah. Rotary in Wallingford from 5 to 7. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also, um, there's a play coming up at Moreover Clue. It's coming up November 22nd and 23rd, so those are things that are coming up. Also, um, Clarendon has a K-2 concert on November 20th. Um, and there's a holiday fair November 16th in Clarendon, too. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Hey, I just sent it so you guys all hopefully will get it. Thank Anything you else for, for community that. engagement? Nope. Done. Excellent. Uh, negotiations? Uh, we are... Yep. Yeah. Uh, we are still just waiting to hear back on dates to get started from our support staff folks. Okay. All righty. Uh, finance. Hey. Um, yeah, you can hear me all right? Yep. All right, so uh, we have a finance meeting on uh, October 29th. This is our last meeting. We got uh, presented with a new rollover budget, a rollover budget light um, that shaved off another about half a percentage increase. So it was a 3% increase. And we saw a 2% and a 0% increase uh, budget proposals as we had requested of Stan and Brian. Um, we as a committee, finance committee, have asked uh, to work with the 3% increase budget with some small tweaks and changes, including an addition of two elementary school math interventionists, um, which is um, something that there was has been community support for, adding some math intervention in schools, uh, in the elementary schools. So that is the budget that is going to start becoming our draft um, for, for full board. Uh, approval and we'll be looking at that at our next finance meeting um, and before that happens in about a month we will also get the December 1st letter um, from the Vermont Commissioner of Taxes and uh, this is something that when we get this bit of information um, it's going to set us uh, up for clarity of what our district will be able to then dis calculate our district tax rate, so our district rate prior to the um, town tax rate affected by the CLA adjustments. So that is something that's coming in the next month. Um, both of these things, the district first letter and then our oh, December, what the heck is December 12th. That sounds right. Yeah, December 12th is when we are our next meeting where we'll discuss um, this latest draft of the budget, um, how the December 1st letter and for, uh, tax rates and how that's going to, where kind of what we're expecting to, to see for district rates after that. We're going to have some conversation of surplus strategy because um, we had a little bit of that started at our last finance meeting, but we didn't have time to really continue on it and wrap it up. Um, so we have a three-year kind of uh, uh, strategy for dealing with our district surplus, and we're gonna we're gonna kind of keep discussing that at this next meeting. Um, and we also had some conversation related to what we just heard from a buildings and grounds update. Um, about thinking about um, strategy around buildings and grounds and potentially addressing some potential big ticket items like floors in all of the schools as a, as a ballot measure. So some thought and discussion around that at the next finance meeting. So a lot happening at this December 12th finance meeting. This is kind of Maybe the big one for the year, hopefully. <laughs> what time? <laughs> maybe, hopefully the big one for the year. Um, 30. Is that, does, that, does that sound like a pretty what good time is the synopsis of where we at? Do folks have questions, thoughts, additions to that? No, I think you did a great job. Stephen, what time did we say we're going to meet? 5 or 5.30? 5? 
I think the minutes reflected 530. We can do oh, five okay. if folks want to do five. No, 530 is fine. I, I think, well, yeah. I, don't I can look again, but I. I think, yeah, I think we may plan 530. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe, yeah, we're leaving, uh, yeah. yeah. If buildings and grounds wanted to try and fit in an hour before that, it sounds like it's going to be a different day, maybe. But um, do folks want to change that to a five? No, I just was wondering. Okay. We, as, yeah, we can leave that 530. Okay. On December 12th. Um, Stephen, I, I actually have something I want to, it's a little bit of a hand grenade I want to toss out there. Uh, <laughs> maybe isn't relevant to your next meeting, um, but given the results of our election yesterday, I think we need to put on the horizon of finances the possibility of some fairly catastrophic changes in federal funding to education. Um, you know, it's not going to happen tomorrow, obviously, but I think there's a distinct possibility that that's coming down the pike next year. We so, could, and Gray, we could speak to that reasonably easily at the next finance meeting and just let folks know what an impact in loss of federal funding would look like. It, would that perfect. be useful? We can do that pretty easily. That, that's what I'm talking about. I, I, I wasn't suggesting that we need to come up with solutions or, you know, something to yeah. plan, but just to have it Good. floating out there in the back of our minds. If, so that would be perfect, I'd say. Yeah, if we always like to have a three, four, five year plan, then that's a reasonable thing to be thinking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Unfortunately, yes. All right. That sounds, that sounds like the right way to handle it. Thank you, Brian. That's easy enough. Yeah, no, good, good thought. Okay. Excellent. So things are moving forward. Um, and yeah, folks would like to attend. This is a good one, a good meeting to attend. Moving on, we have payroll warrants. Um, so payroll warrants for November 6th. Oh, let's see, actually. For October 16th, in the amount of $7,396.15. October 25th, in the amount of $627,722.22. November 1st, in the amount of $7,454.73, for a total of $642,573.22. Uh, is there a motion to approve these payroll warrants? I'll make a motion. Does anyone second? I'll second it. All right, is there any discussion? Okay. All in favor? I, somebody in the room we're good. can help me with the count there. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. And our accounts payable warrants, <clears throat> we have a general fund in the amount of $87,484.36, officials in the amount of $3,647.50, replacement checks in the amount of $1,413, sorry, $1,413.74, General fund in the amount of sixty-seven thousand six hundred sixty-six and eighty-five cents. ASP in the amount of one thousand six hundred fifty-three and thirty-eight cents. And lunch in the amount of three thousand five hundred eighty-one and nineteen cents. And a transfer to food service to general fund in the amount of eighty-nine thousand nine hundred eighty-five and 60 cents for a total there of 255, 432 and 62 cents. Uh, and then we have student activities as well. Mill River, 2,512 and 67 cents. Shrewsbury Mountain School in the amount of 1,818 and 17 cents. Uh, Tinmouth in the amount of 1,417, and Wallingford in the amount of $93.38 for a total there of 5,841.22. Do I have a motion to accept these? 
accounts payable warrants. I'll make that motion. Second. I'll second. All right. Any discussion on these? All right. All in favor? And again, we're good here, Steve. All right. Thank you. I think that's all I have. Uh, again, meeting on December 12th, and there's a virtual option. <laughs> Thank you. All are welcome. Okay. <coughs> and I'll, and I'll, be, I'll be, I was trying to get a newsletter actually to send you for the uh, materials for this meeting, and I didn't quite get it all together, so expect that um, in the next week or so. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Um, next, transact uh, other legal business. We need two. That's, that's where I was going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need two. We need board chair and board clerk because Nick's gone to sign uh, warrants. And do we want to make a motion each or? Yeah, probably. So a motion for maybe Len to sign as board chair because he's been acting as board chair. I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second. I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, who's going to be clerk? Who's going to be clerk? Sign for the clerk on behalf of the board. Okay. Motion for Carol to sign. Yep, second that. Discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Good. Thanks. Um, agenda building. So next meeting would be the 20th. Uh, we've got community engagement scheduled right prior to that. This would be our Tinmith meeting. Uh, we would also have on our schedule board goals or board education. And I would wonder, Bronson, would you want to give a student update? at that meeting. If you don't think you can make that meeting, uh, we can have you when we're back here December 4. December 4th at 7 p.m.? Yes. That's a, it's a band concert that night. Okay, so fair enough. Not. I'll see if I can make it. Okay, okay. Yeah. right on. We can put you on there and if something pops up and you don't get there, we'll do agenda building, we'll put it back on. Yep. Uh, does the board have a sense of if they want to check in on goals or do an education piece? Oh. Brian and I talked today, and um, one of the things that came up in our conversation mm -hmm. was the opportunity for the board to just take some time and talk about what you might need as board members, what you have concerns about as board members, not necessarily goals or those kinds of things, but in, How, uh, things you wish up. things you wish you understood a little better but there yeah. maybe hasn't been a great place to ask those questions yet is that reasonable? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know how people feel about that so that that would fall under board education but it would be less of hey we have a topic today and it would be more of hey what are the things that you're wondering about that yeah. you don't think you understand and should we just are you thinking we just bring that to the board or would we kind of send that ahead of time to Brian. Well, you can send it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which I don't mind, whichever yeah. way you wanted to do it. I just felt it was important yeah. that, that we, yeah. as board members, take the time, you know, particularly with budget and, mm -hmm. and finances and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. And I know even myself, I'm not familiar with how everything works. And that's what kind of brought that up today in our conversation. And, and I wonder what if we did this, we could block off the time and if questions took us five minutes, we could look at goals. If yep. questions took us 25 minutes, we wouldn't look at goals. Is that reasonable? Start with questions and see how long it goes. Mm -hmm. Are folks okay with that? I mean, I, that was just an idea. Yeah, you, you can all say no. <laughs> I also think it would be a good idea to just um, refresh ourselves on what the goals were that we set. Just Fair. even if we don't necessarily have a lengthy conversation but just yep. a, oh yes this is what we and, said we were doing and I'll throw the the I'll put the goals in there as materials no matter what and then even if we just spend a minute on it yeah I think we can make sure to do that okay great yeah.
Okay. So Tinmith, goals and questions, uh, possible student update. Anything else we think we need to do? Okay. If things pop up, let us know. We'll be getting that together and warned next Thursday-ish. So if something pops in your head, email, email Andrea. Uh, yeah, email Andrea, email Josh, email myself. We'll get it on the agenda. Okay. Uh, executive session. Uh, we do have a need for one. We do. Yep. Okay. Oh, Bronson. Can I please just introduce myself tonight? Yeah, absolutely. Now good? All right. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Members of the public, the board. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know me or haven't yet to read my name tag, I'm Bronson Patch. Uh, a little bit about me. I live in Clarendon. I'm 17. I'm a senior here at Mill River. Uh, I've been in the district since preschool. So I've mm -hmm. been here possibly longer than some of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, fun fact. Not me. I, I have. Mom was telling me about uh, uh, I was a student school board rep last year as well. Um, I wish to, after high school, go to college, become an aerospace engineer. Um, some of my areas of focus are about classes themselves. I've taken many AP and dual enrollment courses, used many flexible pathways options. Um, so one concern, while we're in budget season, and I make sure I don't forget about it, um, because senior year is so incredibly busy. I'd like to ask the board, please a lot funds to teachers handling independent studies, because as a small school, they're like for AP French, and I'm um, taking one more independent study, especially senior year, once you kind of get out of sync with some of the typical schedules, it's, it's hard for teachers to have an actual specified class for each that is best helped each student. And in past years, I know you guys have done this, but with the property taxes last year, you guys, I think, dropped it. It might have been a couple years prior. But I would like to ask you to put that back in, if possible. Um, I'm also involved with many clubs and extracurriculars uh, and music, interact clubs, student council, uh, the robotics, Model UN, Ultimate Frisbee is a sport I love and it's been growing the past couple of years. And I'm also a ballot clerk at Clarendon. Saw a couple of you yesterday. <laughs> um, oh, along with that is my, I was reviewing some of the board's policies and goals and stuff in the past couple of weeks. Um, I would like to encourage you to re take another look at pol district policy B10, tobacco prohibition. Um, I found some typos in there and some stuff that is incorrect. Like you guys call yourself the Mill River Union Supervisory Union which is not in any of the other policies and it's not the name of the district. Um, so the policy committee this is what I found on um, the district website. Um, I'd also like to ask the board members to provide and or update your personal statements on the website. It's a little messy. There are only four of you that have provided statements. Um, and that's less than half and the f only some of you have pictures and it's a little messy. Um, so just to remind you of that because I know it probably not at the top of your priorities list but just put it back on there um, and then to especially give you a personal invite to the Interact Veterans Day dinner the <laughs> Clue um, play and the abandoned course concerts coming up just a few of the things that I remember um, uh, on they're on the sheet and then just, I'd like to say, the clue is 22nd, 23rd, 7 p.m., and then the matinee at 2 p.m., and another 7 p.m. show on that Saturday. And then that's all for me. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Bronson. Okay. Um, so we would need a motion to, let me make sure we're doing the right one unless somebody pulls their sheet out faster. <laughs> And it's a race. Yeah, there you go. That's it. For purposes of contract discussion. So we would want a specific finding that premature public knowledge would place the board at a substantial disadvantage for discussing contract. So 
somebody will need to make that motion. Well, Carol's got the sheet. I'll so. make them. Okay. I'll make a motion. We enter executive session for the purpose of discussing contracts that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the board at a substantial disadvantage. I'll second that. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor? And then we actually have to make a yes. motion to go into executive session. Len is exactly right. So I would make a motion to go into executive session. I'll second it. Thank you. Discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Okay.